afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the 2022 version of our WSR live streaming sessions and radio shows. My name is Don Parkinson, and I'm the consultation lead with SNC Lavalin on the Webquay Supply Road project. Today, we're going to kick off another series of radio shows and live streaming sessions on a variety of topics as we move forward to the next phase of the environmental assessment process, which is the environmental assessment phase. Um, every other week on Wednesdays at the same time, 4.30 to 5 p.m., we will discuss a new topic and we want to encourage you to provide as much input as possible by calling or texting us with your questions or comments. Our, the number to call is or text is 1-844-424-0500. Uh, we are doing these streaming sessions to help uh, community members and the general public better understand what's involved in a federal impact assessment and provincial environmental assessment processes and uh, encourage uh, viewers and listeners to participate in both of these these activities. Uh, it's really important uh, for you to, to follow along with this process and contribute to this process um, and that's what we're here for. If you need any explanation of the process or any aspect of it, we're here for you. And with me today is uh, uh, someone not unfamiliar to you from, from the past, Marion uh, Tibor McMahon. Uh, Marion is the Deputy Project Manager for uh, ICE on the Webquay Supply Road Project. Good afternoon, Marion, and welcome back to the co-host chair. I am excited to be back here on the co-host chair. and like, Back so in the hot to... seat, Marion. Yeah, back in the hot seat. I'm excited back to do these live streams. <laughs> yes, yeah, you got to do the radio show earlier today, so uh, um, that was a good experience for you probably, but this is a lot more familiar to you, I think. So, uh, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about um, what today's session is about, and uh, we're calling it Looking Back and Ahead, uh, WSR Activities in 2021 in 2022. Uh, we're going to talk about what we accomplished in 2021 on the project and, and what we're planning to do in 2022. So without further ado, Marion, let's get let's just jump in and get started. Um, maybe you can do a quick run through of what we're going to cover today, uh, just so our, our viewers have an idea of uh, what to expect. Sure. So tech team, uh, why don't you put up slide two? For us please um so for today we'll be covering a lot of information you know we're gonna talk about where we are right now uh in the project going over our next steps and giving you a project update we'll be talking about um the 2021 activities so what did we do and accomplish last year in 2021 um, 2022 activities, so we'll just give you a rundown of what's coming up on the project this year. Um, we'll also talk about 2022 community participation, um, so how can community members help us and the project team, and then uh, what's coming up next, so going over our next few uh, topics for our live streaming sessions and radio shows. Great, thanks, Marion. We've got a lot to, to cover here in a in a short period of time. So um, maybe before we go any where we are now in the overall planning process, um, so our listeners and viewers can see where we are. So uh, I like your name for these guys. Let's call them the tech team. Tech team, can you switch to slide three, please? Thank you, tech team. So let's look at where we are now. So in the provincial environmental assessment process, we reached uh, an important milestone on October 8th when uh, the environmental assessment terms of reference, which is like the work plan for the environmental assessment, was approved uh, by the MECP. So this was an important and long awaited uh, um, a milestone. And what it represented was an approval of the work plan for the environmental assessment. So big step. And uh, so once that was achieved, we were able to officially move into the phase I talked about earlier, the EA phase, the environmental assessment phase of the work where we really do sort of the core work of an environmental assessment. So um, we 
this was an important time. You know, we had started some activities uh, in terms of, you know, baseline activities um, prior to that, which is normal because we know certain things are expected by regulators. But having achieved that allowed us to move ahead into other areas and uh, and really get this project moving along. So, um, Marion, at this point, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about the 2021 project activities uh, relative to the, uh, the EA or Environmental Assessment and Impact Assessment or IA uh, planning processes? For sure. So, tech team, slide four, please. So as Don mentioned, on October 8th, um, the project received a notice of approval of the environmental assessment. Is that for? For the planning process? There we go. Thank you, tech team. Um, so as Don mentioned, we uh, received notice of approval on the environmental assessment terms of project on October 8th. And this notice of approval came with um, some amendments, um, including additional requirements for consultation with Indigenous communities regarding cumulative impacts, as well as additional requirements for consultation with Indigenous communities at key milestones during the environmental assessment development. So just want to remind that, you know, Indigenous communities, as well as the public, they, there's going to be a lot of opportunities there um, to engage with the project team throughout the project and to provide input and feedback uh, during the EA phase. Um, as well, um, 13 study plans were prepared to satisfy the federal impact assessment requirements um, that were laid out in the tailored impact statement guidelines, which is essentially the same as what the terms of reference is, which is the work plan for how we're going to assess potential effects and changes on the environment. And those 13 study plans, um, you know, there is a whole slew of, of study plans, acoustics, socioeconomics, uh, wildlife climate change, air quality, cum cumulative effects. And these study plans are, um, they provide detail on the approach and methods of how we're going to collect baseline information to characterize the existing environment, uh, covering those topics, as well as, you know, um, going through the approach and the methodology for assessing potential effects and what those study areas are to assess those potential effects. Thanks, Marion. Um, I should point out too that in the last quarter of last year, I think starting in October, early October, through to early December, we did um, we did uh, radio shows and uh, streaming sessions on the study plan. So we went through all of these um, mm -hmm. for our viewers, and I believe all of these are available on the website. We can check and make sure that they are. Um, but they're very helpful. I think they will, they give, uh, they give people a pretty good idea of the kind of work that was done, you know, or, or is being done at a technical level. And they're, they're pretty understandable. And I think it's important that, uh, that community members and the general public really get a good understanding of, of just how much is studied as part of an environmental assessment. And, you know, I think the perception was at least not that long ago was that these studies were um, not really that comprehensive, but it's more the opposite. They're, they're extremely comprehensive. They take years to complete. There's many studies of many different topics as Marion read, read to you, uh, you know, ranging from acoustics and socioeconomics to, you know, what people typically think of when they think of environment more which is the more the natural environment so it, they're very wide ranging studies and they're very in depth studies and they occur over you know over over years so um, i think that's important to point that out and and uh, maybe now for our next discussion we should remind viewers that this isn't just an environmental assessment or an impact assessment. Another component to this project is um, a preliminary engineering study. So if our tech team can move to slide uh, five, I'll talk a little bit about this. And um, so what 
has been done as part of this project, uh, sort of a different branch of this project, but still tied in with with um, with the environmental assessment work is is what you call a preliminary engineering study, and that that sort of allows our engineering team to do an early sort of dive into the engineering challenges on the project, and and allows the the team to better define the project from from that perspective. So, it 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 helps you know the the engineering team understand what the landscape is like what the elevation of the land is where the water is you know how long you know what kind of crossings should go where um and then some of the field work um that feeds into it that's also part of the ea is related to you know perhaps you know uh, looking at soils right but in this case they'd be looking at soils where the crossings uh, are so there's you know there's a lot of there's a lot of different um components that feed into the preliminary engineering study uh so you know what i can tell you is that the the work is largely completed um so some of the things that they did in doing that work was look at the geometry of the road so when i when i talk about that i talk about um you know vertical and horizontal alignment so horizontal alignment would be you know the curvature of the road for example um you know so they have to watch you know how how tight corners are for safety purposes and there are standards that need to be followed and then the vertical alignment would relate more to the up and down right so the slopes the up and up slopes and down slopes and making sure those are safe and uh, allow a proper line of sight so that uh, you don't create uh, potential areas of where there might be a, a higher incidence of, of accidents. So, um, and then another big part of it is crossing structures. So um, along the, through the study area, there's 26 crossings, um, three large bridges, fairly large bridges that span, you know, quite a, quite a distance you know, from 50 meters to 250 meters. And so design drawings, preliminary design drawings of these crossings, large crossings and then you know sort of uh typical design drawings of smaller crossings using different kinds of structures um, the various types of culverts for example uh have been prepared as well so an interim preliminary engineering design report uh, was prepared and is now complete and it includes the design criteria and then includes geotechnical so information on the soils particularly in the areas where the crossings are so they can understand what's involved in the design of the supports for the bridges and and when culverts are in place other other things to keep in mind so so that's sort of another side of this project and and that is that is now largely complete so maybe we can move on now to an aspect of of an environmental assessment or impact assessment that isn't always prominent. And um, it may not be prominent, but it's an important part of the baseline studies. And Marion, maybe you can tell our listeners uh, and viewers about what we are up to in terms of noise studies. Yeah, so noise um, studies were conducted uh, between October 24th and November 1st. And uh, my apologies, tech team, can we have slide six, please? Thank you. Um, so these uh, field studies were um, conducted to understand the potential effects of the project on the current um, noise environment, um, including the uh, environment, you know, where traditional activities such as hunting, trapping and fishing occur. Um, so the field crew, they went out there to um, install acoustic recording equipment um, to determine what those existing conditions are uh, on noise levels in three different locations, one in um, the community itself of Webaque, uh, another just outside of Webaque, and then a third one just further down the uh, proposed route there. Thank you, Marion. Uh... I wanted to remind our uh, listeners or viewers uh, that our phone number to contact us at is one 844 You can call or text us at that number with uh, any questions or comments, uh, any kind of input. And in fact, Marion, we have received a text with a question in it. I'm going to throw this one over to you. This is 
right up your alley here. It's, it's how are you doing the socioeconomic study during COVID? Good question. And that is a question that we are receiving uh, lately. So, you know, typically we would be collecting socioeconomic information in person. Um, however, you know, our reality is, is that everything is currently virtual because um, we want to keep ourselves safe and communities safe and we want to do things you know in a way that communities are comfortable with um, so we have um, virtual options to collect information so one being a online survey um, to do with community members where they can just go in online and answer our survey that way we've also um, come up with uh, virtual focus groups um, to get more insights and feedback um, from various uh, population groups within the community, such as men, women, youth, um, elders, knowledge holders. And uh, we're also going to be doing virtual or telephone uh, key informant interviews with um, people uh, from the community, like community representatives or those that have special knowledge uh, to give us in-depth information. So look out for that. Thanks, Marion. Uh, and tech team, if we can move to slide seven, geotechnical and hydrogeology field activities. Okay, we got that up on the screen. So this is another really important part of the project. We need to understand uh, during the project, um, uh, as part of the project, what's going on with groundwater. Um, uh, and that's where these hydrogeology field activities fit in. Um, so in May of this past year, in 2021, we conducted groundwater field surveys where we sampled uh, water, groundwater, and uh, measured water levels in some cases. Um, so this is pretty intensive work. It's very time intensive. We installed wells at these locations so that we can we can sample the water and then check water levels at uh, various points in time to so get an idea of seasonality. And um, so having installed these, we now are logging, you know, some important data sets that help characterize the way things are now, the baseline conditions. And um, so we installed these wells. I believe there were at least 10 of them installed along the road corridor. And they were also installed within the uh, potential aggregate areas where we would uh, get material to build the road with, such as gravel and larger rock. Um, so, you know, because that material was being mined from those areas, groundwater is obviously a consideration. So that's why we would, would drill wells in those areas. And um, so, as I mentioned, groundwater samples were collected and analyzed chemically to understand what the chemical composition of the water is in the different areas. So we can understand again, that snapshot of the way things are now, that baseline, trying to get a get a better idea of the way things are now. So um, now in, in particular, uh, in the areas, the muskeg areas, there, there were wells installed. And the, one of the key things we're interested in there in it, there is, is looking at how the levels change through the season. So that is being done as part of, of this work as well. So another measurement is what you call hydraulic uh, conductivity, which is measuring how easily water moves through the, through the, what's under the ground, what's in the ground. So through soil and rock. And so we get an idea of how quickly things, you know, how things, how things move and how things can change. Just understanding, you know, the, what you call the regime, the groundwater regime of the, of the area. So uh, I think, you know, that was some important work. It's very, as I mentioned, it's very time intensive. We, you know, it, it's, we need helicopters and heavy equipment and, and uh, it's very tough to pull off, but we were able to get that done. So, um, okay, now next up is a review of uh, something Marion was just talking about in answering the text. And that is a review of the socioeconomic study activities. Maybe, Marion, you can take us through that and recap uh, the many things we did in 2021 in that area. Sure. So in the summer, um, in July, 
Um, you know, there was training of six community members to administer the socioeconomic survey that I uh, mentioned just a few minutes ago in Webaquay, and that was completed. And then those commun uh, community members administered the survey in community um, towards the end of July, and uh, there was quite the uh, response rate and participation. We received 195 uh, surveys completed, so currently the, the team is looking at that information information. Um, as well, uh, we conducted a key informant interview with Webaquay's economic development officer at the end of September just to gather information and data um, related to economic development and businesses in the community. Um, so we're going to continue conducting those interviews with uh, other community representatives and uh, special knowledge holders um, to collect information. Yeah, that that survey was a was a big success, wasn't it, Mary? And that, that's a pretty good response rate, isn't it? One hundred and ninety-five. Yeah, very good. So we're excited to and, look through that data. And we, you know, we should thank the community members that that helped us on that, and and uh, we're always looking for more to help us because we have a couple of other surveys coming up too, don't we, Marion? That's right. So. Uh, We'll get to that later, but we're uh, we're looking for volunteers for that as well. So, uh, okay, tech team, if we can move on now to slide number nine. And number nine, slide nine, talks about the biological field activities, which was a busy area for us in 2021, and will continue to be pretty busy in 2022. And and uh, as you can imagine, you know, the biology side is is it's it's a there's a lot of different studies involved in it um so one of the the key things key achievements earlier in the year was the secure securement of permits from different agencies mecp mnrf and eccc um for the to to conduct the wolverine and caribou uh coloring field surveys so um, um in terms of Wolverine, these surveys were completed in in uh, sort of the first year of the surveys was were completed in between February and May. So in February, um, they installed these things that are called run pole uh, sampling stations, which are like it's a wooden apparatus that is attached to a to a tree, and the idea is to get the Wolverine to climb it and reach for the bait and then have its uh, uh, picture taken, and then at the same time, hopefully we can collect uh, hair samples, which can, we can send out for genetic analysis. And and uh, having the the motion sensor, the wildlife cameras there, uh, has allowed us to get a real understanding. Uh, lots of great pictures of these wolverines, and identify, um, you know, to date how many uh, how many in individual wolverines are are occupying the the study area. So. Uh, it's worked out really, really well. We're getting a lot of activity at these stations. Lots of, uh, not just wolverine, but other animals are visiting to say hello and get their picture taken. So we've had caribou and moose and marten and and uh, all kinds of, of other animals uh, are visiting these areas. So it's been, it's been really interesting. I think we have some of those pictures up on our website as well too. So, um, so the, the apparatus was installed in February, and then there were visits in March and April to um, to rebate the stations and uh, to change out the batteries and the the memory cards that store the uh, images that are taken by the camera. And then in May, um, everything was taken down except for the uh, run pole, uh, which is kept up there. And then the teams are returning again at the end of January to do the same program for a second year. So. Uh, after that, we did uh, we did in early February, I guess, and we did a caribou collaring field work, or sorry, in March. And uh, as part of that work, 29 caribou collars, GPS collars, were uh, installed or deployed on female caribou within the local study area, uh, which is about 10 kilometers uh, around uh, on either side of the corridor. Uh, and we did some surface water field surveys in May. Uh, we did field surveys for birds that involved installing what you call ARUs, acoustic recording units. And we did vegetation surveys of the peatlands and wetlands. And we finished those off in July. So 
lots of activities on that front. And um, maybe now we'll move to community engagement and, and Mary can tell you, Mary can tell you a little bit about what we did in 2021 for community engagement and what we're currently continuing to do, I guess. Yeah, so just want to remind everyone that there's lots of opportunities for community engagement and we encourage participation um, as we progress with the project. Um, so here we go on slide 10. Um, <clears throat> we continue to do weekly outreach to communities um, to, you know, encourage their participation in the process. Um, we remind communities of all the engagement options that um, we are open to, to engage with communities, virtual options or in-person options, you know, if we are during that time when we're allowed to go out into the communities following guidelines. Uh, we continue to request for designated contacts um, at the community so that way we're able to work with them closely throughout the, the process, uh, as well as, you know, requesting and doing one hour teleconference calls uh, between the project team and the communities as well, giving them an overview of the project, going over the tour, giving them project updates. Um, we've also, you know, this is also a option as well for, for engagement is doing these live streaming sessions as well as virtual open houses as well. And you know, these live streaming sessions, they're focused on different topics each week um, that we're doing live streams as well. And we've also done and continue to do radio shows via Wawate Radio, um, which is similar to this, you know, going through various topics, giving project updates. And I do want to add, too, that there's a lot of information on the Web Clay Supply Road website, which is supplyroad.ca. And there's a lot of material there um, for people to, um, you know, read more information about the project. We've got a lot of fact sheets on there. We have um, tutorials as well, videos. So there's a lot of good information there. <clears throat> Thanks, Marion. Uh, yeah, a lot going on on the community engagement side. And uh, uh, okay, let me, uh, we're running out of time here. So let me move on to the 2022 activities and, and what we have coming up. There's a lot going on. So we've got Socioeconomics, continuation of key informant interviews, workshops with communities once we're able to, to get into communities. Um, or if we can arrange them uh, virtually, we will do that as well too. So, um, you know, our technical team continues to work with the project team to arrange these key informant interviews uh, because they're really important. And we typically have these with individuals in WebEquay that have special knowledge or information. Uh, that they can contribute to the study to help us better understand how things work in the community and, and the, the, the social and health characteristics of the community as well, too. It's, it's really important information for us to pick up. And uh, we also have two fairly big surveys coming up uh, sometime soon, the Human Health Survey and the Country Food Survey, where we're going to train local members um, to conduct those surveys as well. So that's a big one. Uh, another piece of information, an invitation letter was sent out to selected First Nations regarding the initiation of the Indigenous Knowledge and Indigenous Land and Resource Use Program for the project and to inquire if First Nations are interested in participating in the program. So we encourage this. We are hoping to get that, uh, that information from communities and uh, uh, we can hope we can move forward with that. And uh, let's see, what do we got next? Marion, do you want to talk a bit about how community members can help? Sure. So up? we're looking for community uh, members to help us with um, our field studies this year, uh, specifically the Wolverine and Caribou field studies that's happening, I guess, this winter. And um, <clears throat> we're also looking for volunteers to help administer the human health and the country food surveys in the community. Um, so that'll be the same format as the socioeconomic survey. And uh, of course, um, seeking input to our uh, Indigenous Knowledge program that uh, just started. <clears throat> Thank you, Marion. And if we can, tech team can quickly switch to slide 13. I'll talk to a little bit about what's coming up next. So two Wednesdays, so two weeks from today on January 26th, our next topic will, 
will be what have we heard so far? So talking about some of the comments and questions we've received on the project and talking about them, we've organized these by theme. Um, so it'll give uh, our viewers an idea of, of, you know, just what people are saying about the project from different areas. And, and uh, then on February 9th, two weeks after that, uh, our next... Uh, Streaming session and radio show will be on the environmental assessment and impact assessment processes, and uh, we'll run through those again for all of you because we know it's it, it can be sort of difficult to follow sometimes. So we will run through that and hopefully clear things up. And um, that wraps up today's uh, discussion, Marion. Uh, that was fun. It goes by quickly, doesn't it? It does, yes. I can't believe it's five o'clock already. <laughs> I know. So join us again in two weeks and where we talk about those key themes of comments and questions that we've received. Don't forget to visit our site at supplyroad.ca, like Marion mentioned before, or visit us on social media at WFN Supply Road. So we will see you in two weeks. Thanks for joining us. Miigwech.